If you were given the task to give a public speech right now, there's a good chance you might feel a sense of dread. Thoughts might come into your head like, I'm awkward. I just don't know how to express myself. I'm not funny. This is me. So when one of my best mates asked me to do a wedding speech, I immediately started shitting myself. But what if there was a way I could transform my ability to speak in public with zero experience in just 30 days? So it was about a year ago now, one of my best mates asked me if I could speak at his wedding. Now, anyone that knows me knows that I'm not much of a talker and I hate public speaking and I'm not alone. Apparently it ranks number one in list of fears across the globe with 75% of people suffering with a fear of public speaking, also known as glossophobia, with some people even ranking death below the fear of public speaking. I've somehow managed to avoid public speaking like the plague throughout my entire life with my last public speech being in high school over a decade ago. When my friend asked me to do a speech, a big part of me wanted to turn it down. I was thinking, you could ask one of the other mates, it'll be fine. But also a huge part of me wanted to do it. It would be an honor. There were some things I wanted to say, and this would be a once in a lifetime opportunity to do so. So I said yes. And he asked me roughly about a year ago, which gave me a lot of time to prepare. However, I kept putting it off and putting it off. The speech was in the back of my mind, but I just didn't want to think about it. Every time I thought about it, I'd get a sense of dread and anxiety. But eventually the, the wedding day drew closer and closer and I knew I had to sit down and write this speech. And I wrote it, I wrote something which I was kind of proud of and I had it there all written down, but I knew writing it wasn't enough. I had to practice it some way. And as you do, I was scrolling around on YouTube and I came across a video of a guy who spoke to camera every single day for 30 days to help improve his camera speaking ability. And I thought I could apply the same thing to public speaking or giving a wedding speech that this guy did to speaking to camera. So I set out to do the same. I made a little note on my phone called wedding speech practice. And then I just started speaking to my phone camera once a day, every day for 30 days leading up to the wedding. This is how it went. First take, so I'm basically gonna read this. All right, let's try this again. Second take, first take, had the camera facing the way. It's the summer of 1999. And 25, because he successfully pulled my shorts around my ankles. All right, so it's day three. You can probably hear some people doing karaoke in the background. But that's fine. My genitals are exposed to the world. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name's Chris. And someone as intelli kind, intelligent, and beautiful as We're nervous because it's gonna be, we're nervous because there's gonna be females at this disco. So for the first few days, I was obviously just reading the speech off a piece of paper. I felt and looked really awkward. My speech ended up being too long, so I had to cut bits out. I only had two minutes to give the speech and I think I was taking about three minutes. So I chopped and changed it. I took out unnecessary parts of the story and I did manage to get it down to two minutes. Now it sounds kind of easy doing a two minute speech once a day, every day, but Multiple times I would just forget and remember really late at night and I'd have to sneak out at night. And someone is kind, beautiful, intelligent and tolerant. Or sometimes it'd be so late I'd just have to do the speech in bed just as I was about to go to sleep. It's the summer of 1999. I'm six years old. I'm standing in the school playground and the sun shining in my eyes. But I kept chugging on and chugging on. As the days passed, I got more and more confident. I'd actually managed to commit the whole thing to memory and I felt like I had the speech down. But for everything he's achieved in his work and personal life. And he's the type of guy you can call it for anything. Always welcome me as if they were my own parents. Now as parents, there are certain traditions that you have to do. But then at this point, I started getting lazy. I missed a day and then I'd get back on it. And then I'd miss a couple of days thinking, I, I think I know the speech. I don't think I need to practice it every day. But as the date got closer and closer, the anxiety started ramping up again. Then I flew back to the UK for the wedding and something happened. Always welcome me. What? Just after my airports. Oh, okay, yeah. You can call up here if you want. Oh, it's okay. Now I'm just practicing my speech. Your speech? Yeah. Wendy. Around four days before the wedding, I started getting some serious self-doubt. When I was practicing the speech, it just didn't feel right. I had all these thoughts going through my head like, was it appropriate? Was it even funny? What if I get nervous and bomb? What if I embarrass myself in front of everyone? What if I let my friend down? 
And the night before the wedding, I had one last practice. Okay. No. It's the summer of 1999. I'm so grateful he's found someone as kind, beautiful and intelligent as well. Yeah, I f***ed this up completely. <laughs> it was the night before the wedding and I couldn't even give the speech to my fiancé in my bedroom in my dressing gown. Things weren't looking good. It had been an amazing wedding so far. My friend's Indian, so there was multiple days of celebration. And this was the final day, the day of the speeches. They had the ceremony in the middle of the day and it was beautiful. But for the whole day, I had this speech lingering in the back of my mind. Eventually I found out that the speeches would be after dinner and it meant I'd have to wait even longer to get it over and done with. The food they brought out looked absolutely delicious, but I was so nervous, I just couldn't eat. In fact, I had to step out during dinner to practice my speech a couple more times on the street. And if you want to see some objective evidence of how nervous I actually was, my watch was tracking my heart rate the whole time. For an hour leading up to the speech, it just stuck around 126 beats per minute. Eventually, it was time for me and my other mate to get up on stage. Somehow he managed to jump ahead of me and go first, which meant I had to sit there and watch him give his amazing speech first. And it was a really tough act to follow. Now, my heart rate was up to 185. Bear in mind, my max heart rate is 189. So I don't even know how it was physiologically possible for my heart to be going that fast. And then it was my turn to give my speech. I took to the mic to see if talking to the camera every day for 30 days had worked like it was supposed to. I'm six years old. I'm standing in the school playground and the sun shining in my eyes. And for some reason, my genitals are exposed to the world. <laughs> I turn around slowly and see a young sh kissing himself laughing as he successfully pulled my shorts to the ground. <laughs> and 25 years later, he's still pissing himself laughing about it. <laughs> I was like the annoying older brother I never had. I love him. He is quite annoying. And I'm so grateful he's found someone who loves him and can embrace all aspects of him. And someone who's kind, beautiful, intelligent, and tolerant. Much emphasis on the tolerant part. Seriously, I don't hope up with him. But I'm actually really proud of him. He's uh, not only for getting cash out of but for everything he's achieved in his work and personal life. And he's the type of guy you can call up for anything. But I know someone who'd be even more proud of him. And that's why. Now, the great pleasure of spending a lot of my childhood with my mum and dad, who would always work for me as if they were my own parents. And as parents, there are certain traditions that you have to do. So she was like 12 years old, we are sitting in the back of his dad's car, nervously driving to our first ever school disco. We're nervous because we go to an all-boys grammar school, and there's going to be females at this disco. <laughs> the kind of females we haven't seen for over two years. She was dad, sensing our apprehension, turns around to give us some fatherly advice. Do you remember what he said? Make sure you gyrate tonight, boys. <laughs> Gyrating is dancing with your hips in a circular motion. So we gyrated. <laughs> and we're still gyrating. And it seems to have worked. I know he's proud of you, I'm proud of you, brother. Congratulations to the Biden group. And one last thing, let's gyrate. <laughs> And then it was over and it was one of the best feelings of my life not just that it was over and my heart rate would return to a normal human beings but i actually enjoyed it and i know it wasn't perfect and i spoke way too fast but for my first speech in my adult life i was happy with it when i was saying the speech it wasn't just like the words i practiced it wasn't just words it was a chance to tell one of my best mates what he meant to me and tell the story of his father to everyone that he loved and by practicing the speech every day for 30 days I felt like I was able to deliver that message and really feel it. Yes, it was horribly uncomfortable, but if you have a speech coming up, remember this. One, practice helps. I'm really glad I did this 30 day challenge. It only took me two minutes a day to do, so it really didn't take me that much time. And it really helped me cope with the anxiety of the build up. Two, you don't look as nervous as you feel. I had multiple people coming up to me afterwards saying I looked natural on stage. But on the inside, I was dying. You saw my heart rate. So yeah, however you feel, you don't look that bad. And three, doing the things that scare you the most, the hardest things, will be the most important things you do in your life. I genuinely felt high for a few days after this. 
These moments with you and the people you love are what make life worth living. Thank you for letting me speak at your wedding, mate. Congratulations to the bride and groom. This has been Behind the Scenes Weekly, episode 16. I'll see you next week. Keep training, keep living, peace.